Hello, everyone. Welcome to Urban Asian. I'm your host, Krishna Parikh. And today I am totally fangirling over uh, our next guest. I have the privilege of chatting with the one and only Pallavi Sharda. Pallavi, welcome to Urban Asian. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm good. I'm so good. I'm so glad to be speaking to you. Yeah. I Can you talk about wedding season and how it's been received globally? Oh my God, it's been so overwhelming and so beautiful to see the response to this film. It was made with so much love and I think that's what people are feeling. They're feeling the love and mm -hmm. um, I've read every email, every DM, every message that's come my way and honestly, it's taken up the last month of my life just to respond and to soak in the, the work that we've done having had such a, a profound effect on so many people. Mm -hmm. I've watched the movie I think twice now and I totally relate um, to the characters and the story and everything that's going on. So tell me about like when the script came to you what attracted you to the script? Oh gosh it was just you know it was great to see a nuanced woman Indian woman written this way. Um, there are lots of scripts that come to me that carry the tropes of a, a romantic comedy, but none which resonated in, in in this manner because Asha, she's just complex. And, um, you know, I really loved the different elements. You have her family relationship, her commitment to her work, her desire to remain true to herself throughout. And I think the core values that she espoused were very relatable to me. And I think relatable to a lot of South Asian women globally mm -hmm. and just break away the archetype and replace that with particularities I think was so important and Shivani did that so well in the script. Yeah talking about Shivani can you tell me about how your experience was working with like a female uh you know cast of like just amazing women filmmakers? Oh gosh it was just you know it felt like family and Shivani and I only met for the first time a month ago at the premiere of the film and it was like oh wow I know you <laughs> Um, and she obviously wrote, you know, initially, I think from her time and her generation of what it was like growing up in Jersey with an arranged marriage trope. And then we did some work to kind of make it a little bit more today. And I just loved how open she was to all the collaborations and, you know, all the input that I had on the script as well, because I, 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 I really did like, you know, get in get in there and, and make sure that every word I was saying was a word that I believed in as an actress and for the character. And I think just that open collaborative spirit was something that I was so fortunate to have. Yeah, and I think it's really important too to have that collaboration with the team that you're working with in a project like this too. Um, can you tell me about your personal experience of having faced something like Asha did or like having those prying aunties and uncles um you know asking about what you're doing when you're getting married and blah 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 <laughs> for me I'm an actress right so my thing is not about marriage it's like when you're getting a real job <laughs> um, <laughs> that's what I faced I've never really had any pressure around that I mean ironically when we wrapped up shooting we're shooting in Toronto I had like one family friend in Toronto that I you know, you do the call to say, hi, uncle, I'm in town. I'm not going to be able to see you, but I'm in the same time zone. So I guess I'll call you. Um, and he was like, so what are you getting married? And I was like, I literally just did a movie about this and I'm super triggered right now. So don't like, don't even dare go there. Um, and I think my mom called me the other day. So it would kill me for saying this, but she was like, so-and-so auntie called me to say that your chemistry with your co-actor was so good. What about him? And I'm like... <laughs> I was going to call Serge and be like, hey, can we fake date to like pretend to the aunties that I'm finally getting married? <laughs> like, Right. Like make that happen in real life, <laughs> not like, just the movie. Meta, <laughs> metafy this whole thing. Um, but no, honestly, I have very open parents who have let me be extremely free. There's no way that I would be sitting here having this conversation with you at this stage in my career if that wasn't the case, you know. Um and I, I will say that I think being an actress means that your dating life is often not very robust because you spend most time on set. 
um, or, you know, just traveling around. And so I would welcome some serious help at this point. Let's be honest. <laughs> Yeah, right. Like, let those aunties come in. Like, can you like, <laughs> come through, aunties. Go find me a prince. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Um, and I was talking to Suraj about this too. But like, the way I think Indian cinema and just that diversity, you know, it's it's recognized right now. And I read your profile on Instagram. You know, it talks about debunking diversity one role at a time. Can you talk a little bit about that and what that means to you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think diversity for me is a buzzword, which hopefully will be done away with soon, because I think the way it's operated, I think maybe the last four years, it's become something that the industry talks about, or all industries are talking about, and rightfully so, because we didn't have language before to to actually encapsulate what is this concept of being open hearted towards everyone, despite where they may come from, how they may look. And I think it was really positive when I read that that was a big part of the conversation. And it's what precipitated my move from India to actually working in the West. It was like, oh, you guys are not going to be offended by a brown woman that looks like me on screen in like a, a major role. Great. That's amazing progress. Like I will take that. Mm -hmm. However, I do think that then what has happened to a large degree is that that, that terminology can be used to other us just as much, you know, you're the diverse actor, you've been, or to tokenize. And that's something that I would like to steer away from in the work that I do and to help guide the conversation away from that because it's not about, you know, talking about diversity as the us and them of, you know, how we look at the world, but really normalizing just everyone being us. And um, I think in each role, what I've tried to do is to make sure that I create a very nuanced character that represents a different element of what it is to be someone who grew up South Asian globally. And, um, you know, I, I'm very proud of the fact that from one role to the other, you can't, there's no real kind of overlap. Yes, there are obviously elements, but I try and bring a distinct flavor um, from a, my very pan Indian or pan South Asian, you know, knowledge and and upbringing to that role. So, yeah, I think that's why it's it's about debunking it because mm -hmm. it's about saying that within that archetype there are nuances, and we need to make sure we're looking at that very carefully. And coming back to the role of Asha, right? She's really strong and independent. And oftentimes, like, that's looked at as a bad quality, especially in the South Asian culture. Um, can you talk a bit about that and how that relates to the whole wedding culture? Um, and I think how, like, this movie just kind of put a positive spin to it, too. Yeah, I mean, I, I've always been a very strong world girl. And... I was always quite non-conformist in the way that I looked at the world and went about things. And it was always like, okay, what's the straight and narrow path? All right, let me take the other one. You know, that was interesting to me in life, like the sense of adventure and going towards that, which is difficult, has always been attractive. And I think Asha is the same. And I love that line where the aunties say marriage is forever, but careers fade away. And she's like, uh, I'm <laughs> You know, I'm naturally not looking for revenge, auntie, you know, um, and, and and just putting a stamp on what she's trying to do in her life. And she's trying to make a difference through this loan initiative because she knows the trickle on effect that it'll have. And she knows the effect that her privilege and power and education can have on so many others. And I think that's what a lot of us feel that have grown up in the diaspora in very privileged environments where our parents gave us the world, gave us really strong education being first and foremost in many of our cases. And then us saying, all right, well, we have all of this, you know, we have this skill set. How do we give back? And I know this is something that a lot of my friends think about. And so for me, just shining a light on the fact that Asha's, you know, her way of thinking is not selfish. It's not, you know, yes, she's making choices for herself, but that doesn't mean that she's selfish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to also talk about, I spoke to Natanya who wrote Show Me Love for the movies for the end, um, the dance and everything. Um, how was that experience? Um, just the song itself too, I think it's so like Bollywoodish. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. like okay, in the love... pictures. Like, how are you? Like, are you hopeless romantic? Are you romantic? How does I'm that like? Such a hopeless romantic. I mean, um, a lot of people probably don't realize that because when they meet, like, my close friends are like, she's just a sap. Like, you know. <laughs> But uh, I think those who see me in a professional setting probably see me as like this very kind of, you know, go get a person who's very practical and pragmatic. Mm -hmm. But actually, I think I'm a really good balance of like left side, right side of my brains operating together, the creative and the rational. And I, I, I would have to be a romantic. I mean, I ran away from home to be an actress that's romantic in and of itself. Um, but yeah, going back to that song, I, I hadn't heard it until I saw the final cut of the film and we were working with a scratch track when we were choreographing and performing that piece. And, um, so we had no idea. And we actually rehearsed to the old Hindi song, Jimmy, Jimmy, Aja, Aja. Ah. <laughs> it was faster in beat. And then everyone was like, you know, doing Jimmy, Jimmy, like doing the sprinkler and doing the water and all of that. And then when we got to set, they were like, here's the scratch piece. And it was a totally different tempo and pace. So I had to like take everyone aside and be like, okay, this is the actual tempo. And we just performed it to a scratch. So when it all came together and I heard the lyrics and I heard, you know, the sentiment of the song, I was blown away because it takes serious talent and goes to the core of our hybrid cultures where you can bring a piece like that, that's so universally catchy, mm -hmm. but but the lyrics and the lyricism are so rooted in what we love about our Indian culture. Yeah. And you've had experience working um, in Bollywood too. Can you tell me like the difference that you've seen between working in the West versus the East? Oh, I mean, you know, there's less people on set here. <laughs> in Bollywood, it's like, am I at the Kumela every oh day? Oh my gosh. And just the way things work there, that, you know, they have a great, system it's mm -hmm. just different and for me it was a rude job because I started my career in India right mm -hmm. so for me that was my normal and then when I went to set in Australia for the first time I remember I was like why is everyone lining up for lunch you know like just little things I just didn't understand the mechanics of mm -hmm. how it worked but obviously you know I'm very adaptable and I figured it out you know in a day um but you know at the end of the day I will say the artistry of filmmaking is universal and the craft of filmmaking is universal. Your cameras are in the same places. There's only one way to shoot an over shoulder shot. You know, a French over is a French over, uh, a, a wide is a wide, a dolly is a dolly. And that's what I love about this craft is mm -hmm. that not only is the idea of storytelling universally relevant, but even the craft itself is, and it allows for such great collaboration across borders. And we're seeing more and more of that. And exactly. it's only going to become way more robust as time goes on. There are more, more co-production co deals being signed between different countries. You know, I just got a message, lovely message from a fan out in Italy saying she loved the film and that's the whole thing. Like watching a film is not foreign as a concept. Everyone watches movies that has access to them. It's just like, how do we get a different lens into a different culture? So I think I'm really lucky that I've had such global filmmaking experience because it means any set I walk into, I'm not surprised or a fish out of water. I'm like, all right, this is how we do it today. You know, or this is how we're going to do it tomorrow. And that's a great skill. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's awesome. Um, who do you want to work with um, as an actress um, the most? Like someone that you dream of working with? Oh, I guess Baz Luhrmann um, as a director. I'm putting that on the record, Baz. Um, Strictly Ballroom was a big inspiration to me as an Australian great classic. And it was a dance film. And obviously I'm a dancer and... Mm -hmm. I'm just dying and and you know this is what drew me to Bollywood was that you danced in movies and it was this ready-made format for people who love to move and it's so much about of our culture that's how we express joy so it was actually joy that I was moving towards mm -hmm. you know like how can I work in an environment where I get to share joy every day and mm -hmm. Bollywood was such a source of that for me growing up. Um, but I've realized that it's not just Bollywood, you know, that's possible everywhere. But, you know, that's 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 one. I have multiple pipe dreams. Um, and 
I just, you know, I'm, you know, want to, I want to create stories and I want to work with great comedians. I want to work with Taika. I want to work with, you know, like just globally. I want to work with her again, you know, on, I, I'd love to work with her on a film because I think she just so beautifully encapsulates that that experience in in her craft when it comes to storytelling through film is is like no other and films like Baji on the Beach and and Spencer like Beckham were iconic and pioneering movies and if I can learn from from my people that have have paved the way um I'd be very grateful yeah and I saw that recently um Mindy Kaling also tweeted about the movie itself how did that feel I mean, like all of a sudden my Instagram was blowing up, but not, you know, with fan engagement or audience engagement, but with with our crew, like just DMing every each other. <laughs> oh, I was in a meeting. I'm like, Did that happen? <laughs> and Shivani and Rashi and Ari, everyone is just like texting. And then I saw it. I was like, yes. And, you know, I, I, I tweeted back at her and I was like, I know that the hotness you're referring to is my dirty taco talk um, <laughs> in the movie. But no, jokes aside, it, it meant so much to be supported by someone who's been such a pioneer in this space and has constantly uplifted others through her work. And she, she did the same by tweeting about our film. So I was very chuffed. Yeah, I think that support is definitely needed and um, that recognition too, it helps too, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I just want to quickly ask, who has been your favorite co-actor thus far? I know you've Ooh. worked with a lot of big names, Aishwarya Karada, oh. Ranbir Kapoor, Suresh Sharma, like who's been your oh, favorite? God, I've been so lucky, by the way, can I just say with my like male co-leads, um, you couldn't ask for a better <laughs> repertoire of of um, people to share space with, but it's different, you know, like Ayushman and I had a great rapport and great chemistry in Hawaii Zada. And, you know, that was like an epic love story. And we mm -hmm. managed to bring that to life. And we worked together for two years on that movie. So obviously oh, wow. very close friends. Um, Suraj is, you know, I think the film speaks for itself, what we were able to create in a very short amount of time, having just met like, four days before filming was starting in in a on a in a look test we'd only been on zoom before that and we really got to know each other in that first week where we shot all of Asha's um house scenes and a lot of those montage sequences and the montage sequences are like we're in love right and it's like I just met you but here let's play dirty banana grams together <laughs> um and that experience is like no other when you really just go we're going to do this, you know, we're going to make this work. And it was this wonderful shorthand that we had. And we have so many similar cultural um, similarities, I guess, you know, we're both Delhi kids, even though I grew up in Australia, he grew up there, but my parents were from a very similar part of Delhi. Our parents mm -hmm. went to the same, birth. he went to the same school as my dad in, Indi wow. in India. So luckily there was a very instant connect on our Indian side. Mm -hmm. Um I guess he maybe didn't realize how Indian I am. And when I was like riffing in Hindi, he was like, okay. <laughs> um, and then, you know, like I just worked with a great actor in Australia, Damien Struthos on, in the mm -hmm. 12, who similar to my relationship with Suraj became a great friend and we had great chemistry on scene, screen. But let me not, let me not ignore the women that I've worked with. Vidya Balan being, you know, up there as one of the top co-actors I've had. And she's amazing. You know, this in a role where she was literally slapping me around as the the madam of the brothel where I played mm -hmm. a sex worker and you know she reached out to me when wedding season came out and it meant so much because you know to have someone who led a cast of women with as much grace as she did that actually was a pivotal turning point for me in my career to 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 to, to be able to be supported and held and surrounded mm -hmm. that way by someone who is more experienced than you and um, has more leverage than you in an industry. That was a great example of how I wanted to operate in my own career. And similarly, I worked with Michelle Monaghan last year on a film as an action film, and we had massive fight sequences together and we just had each other's backs, you know? And I just think in general, it's, it's particularly in the last few years, I've been very lucky. I've loved every cast member I've ever worked with. There's not one person that I haven't enjoyed working with. 
That's awesome. Uh, what's coming down the pipeline for you? Like what other projects can you talk about right now um, that we can see you in? There's going to be a lot, but I can't really say anything. You can't say much. <laughs> <laughs> but I want that deadline article to break. Um, no, there's there's a lot happening and it's really exciting. I'm reading a lot of really great scripts at the moment. And, you know, uh, there's, there's projects that um, I'm going to go shoot shortly and I will tell you about them. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, and one last thing for girls and women who uh, are kind of facing the things that Asha faced in the movie, right? What would be your advice to them? just get it, just go get it. You know, there is no, there is no imposter syndrome. There is no ceiling. There is no self-limiting thought that should get in your way anymore. You know, this, and I'm saying this from my own experience as someone who's mm-hmm. experienced all of those things. Now is really the time, you know, we, we, we read about it online. We, everyone's talking about the zeitgeist, which is shifting away from people being made to feel small or to feel like they don't belong that is irrelevant today you know we are here and we deserve to have the space that we are occupying on this earth we were born for a reason and that reason was to fulfill our destinies and fulfill our dreams so just go get it like don't think twice don't think twice I was an overthinker don't overthink it well that spoke to me so I'm going to receive that message too (laughs) thank you so much Polly. this is such a great chat thank you um thanks so much for your time and thanks for talking to us at urban asian thank you and you're listening to me Pallavi sharda on urban asian <laughs>